In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's first reading was very long, uh, and it was an abbreviated version of the story of Noah and the Flood. And it's one of those stories that we like to tell our children when we first get them reading the Bible because it's full of lots of lovely animals and things. And you imagine all these animals all crammed together inside the ark. Uh, and it's still, you know, it's one of those great stories that we love to talk, uh, love, to tell, love to tell. And of course, it's a story that goes back thousands and thousands of years. Um, the first flood story, a very similar sort of thing, was told in Mesopotamia well before the Bible was even thought about. Um, so, so it's uh, something that runs very deep in, in humanity, this idea of, of the fear of an overwhelming flood. And of course, the biblical version of this uh, is, ironically for our time, it takes about a year. So Noah is 600 when the flood comes and he's 601 when it goes away. And so he's been in the ark with his wife and his three sons and his son's wives for about a year, being protected from the overwhelming flood. Does that sound familiar? We've all been stuck at home, protected from this overwhelming scourge. It's quite significant that many, many parish churches, one of mine included, are built so that they, the roof inside looks like an upturned boat. Um, because parish churches were seen as being a bit like the ark. They, they, they are figuratively referring to the ark as being a safe place. And, and Christians have forever seen the church and the body of Christ as being this sanctuary, this safe place from all the evil and flood and chaos and, and things that go on in the world around them. That's why that part of the church where people sit is called the nave. From, from navy, you know, it's to do with this, this, this nautical uh, language that we use when we're talking about the ark and floating on the water and so on. Um, and, and I just want to sort of reflect on that because that idea of safety, haven, is where we get the word heaven from. Uh, and so our, our images of heaven are closely related to our images of safety. If you read through the Psalms, which we, we do every Sunday, um, there are lots and lots of words which are about having a place of safety, a place to retreat to. And, and that's effectively what the ark was for Noah and his family. They could retreat into the ark so that they could float on top of the flood and God would look after them. I particularly want to ref ref draw your attention to one very small part of the story uh, which people have focused in on as being quite a significant thing, where it says, you know, he went into the ark that he built and the Lord shut him in. So the idea that when we go to church to retreat, to be safe from the, the evil that's around us, that God shuts us in for our protection is an interesting one because we've all been shut in for many months. But I wonder how many of us have thought, hmm, yes, it is God that is shutting us in. You know, it's Boris that's shutting us in. But actually, you know, it, it's God that brings about the circumstances in which we are protected. And if that's the case, how does that affect how we view heaven? Does God shut us in heaven? I wonder what that feels like. Or is there more to this than that? Because the boat idea is only one image of heaven. I talked about our parish churches as being built around this idea of, of, of the boat. Um, but they're also built around another idea. They're very similar, traditional parish churches, uh, to the Temple of Solomon. There are three parts. You've got the nave, the chancel and the sanctuary. And that's very similar to, to the three-part uh, dis design of Solomon's temple. And indeed, other temples that we've dug up uh, and which were common at the time. 
The reason why I'm telling you that is because the temple, as described in the first book of Kings, chapter 6, is described in the same way as the Garden of Eden, with palm trees and flowers and cherubim. You see, the temple in Jerusalem wasn't just meant to be a building. It was a place of, well, heaven. It was a garden. I've stayed out in the garden for these services all through the year, despite people saying, can you come back to church? I said, no, 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 I'm going outside. Because a garden is slightly different from the ark idea. And when we look in Revelation, we see a very different development because there's another image of heaven and it's Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem coming down out of God. And the writer is very clear that in the new Jerusalem, there is no temple. There is no place of worship in Jerusalem, but Jerusalem itself is a cube. It's something like 2,000 miles long, 2,000 miles wide and 2,000 miles high. It's this massive cube. Now you may say, what on earth is that about? Well, the thing is, the sanctuary in the temple was also a cube. So what the writer is looking forward to is there is a heaven which is beyond the bounds of a sort of a cultic setup. I like to say there's no religion in heaven. We don't need it anymore. And just in case you're also wondering, um, for, for those who, who know, know about Islamic things, um, the Kaaba at Mecca, which is the, you know, the, the, the holiest thing in the, in, the, in the Islamic world, is also a cube. And I think it's significant that it's cuboid. So all of these things are linked. And they're all bound up with how we view heaven. There's another view of heaven, which Jesus gave to, his, gave to his disciples the night before he died, which is of heaven as a house. In my father's mansion room, uh, in my father's house, there are many mansions or many rooms. And so we can think of heaven in different ways, of a boat, of a house, of a garden, but it's that one in Revelation that I really want to think about because there's no temple there and it's urban. So for the Revelation image of heaven, heaven is a city street, a plaza, a gathering of all the people together. And as we come out of lockdown, Maybe that's the sort of heaven we need to be thinking about. As people gather again in large numbers and they're trying out various things at the snooker and at the Brit Awards and in the football, we're starting to play around with what are these, these wonderful heavenly things that we really crave. We've been kept safe in our little arcs from the plague that surrounds us but it's been painful being on our own. Noah and his family, there's, a, there's only eight of them. And we've probably felt like that in our little bubbles or if we've been literally on our own. But now comes a different type of heaven. We've been in our gardens for a few weeks, those of us who are lucky enough to have one. And a garden is paradise. Paradise is a Persian word for garden. But let's move into the city streets now and into the plazas. Let's gather when we can in crowds. And I hope at some point we'll be able to sing together as well. Let's ring the bells. Let's call people back to worship. Call people together. Because whatever else we say about heaven, heaven is a place where we are together. Whether we're in the boat, at home, in the garden, or in the street, we mingle. As human beings, we can't do anything else. So, 
I don't know which is your favourite image of heaven, the boat, the house, the garden or the street, but be comforted that you can think of heaven in different ways and that heaven is open to everybody who wants to be there because God wants everybody to be saved and so that's why occasionally he has to shut us in. Amen.